Hey guys, wanted to do a little quick review and uh, not an unboxing though since this motherboard has already been unboxed of the MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon. A couple of people have mentioned this board to me and I know this board was already released in 2017 but I thought I'd go ahead and mention it. It does support the new uh, 2000 series Ryzen CPUs and therefore is still a pretty good board to get your hands on even in 2018. This one in particular already has the BIOS updated, but if you do have this board or do have a purchase a board that may not have this little sticker here, there's a good chance it probably doesn't support the 2000 CPUs out of the box. And uh, as I said, this is an unboxing video, and uh, you can see here the board's already installed. So I'll go ahead and um, give you a couple of um, experience with this board already. Um, my personal experience, I already ordered a few of these over the last year and a half and uh, show you some uh, specs it's got, maybe a couple little settings in BIOS, board container right on top of everything. Here's the manual. Inside the manual is this little flyer here talking about um, correct positioning for memory chips. And on the subject of memory chips, by the way, if you do own this board or you're considering getting it, definitely a good idea to update the BIOS. Uh, I definitely have noticed quite a bit of improvement on the board since owning it uh, last year in like May since updating the BIOS. So you get better compatibility with memory chips, which I've definitely noticed, even just some cheapy, cheapy, generic uh, DDR4 chips, uh, as well as faster post times. That's another thing I've definitely noticed as well too, if anyone's having those issues. I can definitely tell you about that. Thank you from MSI for purchasing this board, some quick installation guide, the awesome little uh, stickers for SATA cables to label them. This can actually be useful, to be honest. I've just never used them. Driver CD, but you can always get drivers off the internet, off MSI's website. These are LED cables, I believe. There's two of them in here. Uh, SLI bridge. And uh, just some SATA cables themselves. So that's pretty much it. Um, again, I already unboxed this before, so I don't need to tell you all that. And uh, just to look at the back, if you're curious about that. One little rant I do have about this board, the Mystic Light software that now has been coming out with newer MSI boards, I, last time I tried using it on this board, even with a new BIOS, it does, it does not work. So you actually have to use the gaming um, whatnot software that they have, which is actually pretty useful, but I believe it just comes with quite, not necessarily bloatware, but software you may not even be interested in. Now. If you're just going in there just to change the lighting, the LED lighting on the board, eh, you may find it a little cumbersome to just install that software and uninstall it and whatnot. But that's my only little rant for this board at the moment. I'll go ahead and uh, show you the board up close. So I went ahead and took out the video card here so you can actually see the whole board with nothing obstructing it. Now it is already installed in the computer as I said earlier as you can see here. But here's a whole board in general view, and I want to talk about a couple of specs uh, as quickly as I can here. Obviously, here you can see clearly three video card slots. Obviously, if you're going to be using this in single card setup, like uh, you saw earlier, this computer already is, then you want to use the top X16 video card slot. There are six SATA ports down here. Whoops. Over here, there's four over here. Two down here as well too. I guess you can your case will pretty, pretty much determine which orientation, which slots you want to actually use. Um, in this case, whether you prefer these or these sticking up, cable coming out. It's really more for wire management though. While these are really nice, I always find them slightly pain to disconnect cables and whatnot while the board's installed. And uh, especially if you're trying to take the bottom ones out and the top ports are in the way. Speaking on the uh, round here, we have also a USB 3 front connector, one here, and one that's currently being used down here. So potential for four USB 3 front connectors. And on the subject of USB, let's move over here real quick. We have a total of eight USB ports in the back, two USB 2s, the rest are all USB 3 1s, with two of them being the second generation 3 1s, and one of those two ports being the new type C, pretty popular with smartphones nowadays, if yours uses one. 
Up here we have four memory slots and uh, just like that little sheet I showed you guys earlier, really important whether you're using one DIMM, two DIMMs, or even all four. I guess if you're using all four, no worries. Just fill them all up. There's definitely no orientation to put a single and a dual, just like I have here, using only these two particular slots. And uh, usually it's, uh, generally speaking, it's the same configuration for these uh, boards these days with, with two chips, which is probably a very popular setup. Um, I mean, I may not vary, but this is generally speaking the configuration it usually is. Um, while we're up here, just also want to show you there's a CPU connector up here, the usual A pin. Now, I wanted to mention that because the Titanium X370 board has an additional four or six pin, I believe, uh, more CPU overclocking potential. But the X470 Gaming Pro Carbon has dual a pin connector, so even more headroom for um, overclocking and giving a CPU all the power it needs. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're not planning to really go crazy overclocking, this board looks better and better, especially now that it's been a year and the price has definitely gone down. And last time I looked, there's definitely MSI rebates attached to it. So that's something else to keep in mind too. Down here we have two of the SSD M2 slots, one over here and one down here. This one in particular is like a little heat sink that MSI decided to introduce. A uh, couple of uh, mixed feelings on that. Supposedly it's supposed to do a good job, but some people have said in reviews and comments that that actually even makes the, the SSD chip even hotter and the throttle begins to kick in hella sooner. Um, what I personally want to do once I start using M2 chips is actually get a little dedicated heatsink. So, good thing is there's another one down here, so you don't have to rip pieces off to get this off. But just keep that in mind. I guess, you know, other people have more experience with that. I haven't used these chips just yet. But when I do, I'll probably post a video about it. <laughs> so, I look forward to that as well, too. And another good thing about this board, you really can't see, even though it's over here hidden, is the LAN connector is an Intel. LAN connector as opposed to other brands like a Realtek. I do hear that the Intel LAN connector does use less CPU resources, so I've def definitely seen a bit of a difference when using that, to be honest. On um, connections as well, too, the onboard Realtek video, um, excuse me, the audio sound is actually really good, no interference from what I've seen, uh, even though some audio files and whatnot probably want to use like an external or even an internal dedicated sound card. Comparing it again to the titanium version of this board, one thing this board does not have is the little LED display that shows you any post BIOS post errors when trying to boot up. Now most of us probably don't use these um, and I actually personally have taken it to, for granted until a long time ago I had a CPU that would not work and boot up the computer. The computer was failing to post because of the CPU and I got a little error message and actually I believe there's actually in the manual if your board does have one there's actually the codes and their definitions in my case I had a D0 which means CPU is failing to initialize those little displays are usually up here and down here um, like I was saying earlier most people will probably won't even use that but you never know looking down here we just have your little onboard audio connector um, here's the LED control that I have for the CPU. Connected down here already. Did a little wire management with uh, Velcro. Here are the front pound connectors, the probably most tedious thing to hook up <laughs> on any board for the most part. Over here is a USB connector. This is a regular USB 2 connector that I do have two ports in the front currently in use. Here's another one that's currently not in use. Your USB 3 connector and just a couple of SATA ports that I mentioned earlier. Down here, obviously, another thing that's not on this board are the is like a little power button or reset button and also buttons to do overclocking and incremental plus and minus buttons. Again, this is something that's on the titanium version of the board and other higher end boards, not on this one. Con uh, considering the price point, it's definitely a good buy. Uh, even though obviously some little options here and there are not there, but again, if you're going to overclock The more traditional way is through the BIOS or some software that will allow you to access the BIOS once you're booted into your operating system 
As I mentioned earlier, I'm currently running a Ryzen 1700 CPU here. Um, but I also want to tell you also that I did have a 2700 Ryzen second generation CPU running on this board. As I said earlier, and even the little sticker on the board mentioned, it does support the second generation Ryzen CPUs. Now, this board's been out for a year now, so there are some boards that I have purchased, including the first one I bought back in, uh, I would say, July of last year, that will not run the Ryzen second generation out of the box, no problem. BIOS update will definitely solve that. And I definitely can stress what a good idea, idea it is to upgrade the BIOS on this board if you already have one. There are many improvements such as memory compatibility, post issues, I definitely was post issue that uh, was haunting me for some time, and uh, other improvements as well too. So good idea to update it as well. So let's go ahead and uh, get that card back in here and we'll boot this uh, computer up. All right, let's go ahead and boot this up. Colors are kicking in, and let's go ahead and uh, head into the BIOS. So here we are, I have to boot up. I just went ahead to the delete key on this little uh, usual wireless keyboard and trackpad combo. And uh, there you go. Board name, CPU, amount of memory. I just realized this actually is not on the latest BIOS build, so I'll probably go ahead and upgrade that at some point. And uh, here's a BIOS for you. And it's just a little board explorer option here that I really like. You can actually hover over use DIMM slots, USB SATA ports, and actually see what's actually plugged into each one. Oh, that's interesting. Pretty useful. And uh, over here we have OC settings for overclocking and whatnot. As I said, uh, this one does have the standard 8-pin CPU pin uh, power connector. Um, the 470 version of this board does have two of them. So I guess that does give you a little more overclocking uh, capability, just an FYI. I am running this on default speed because these are GP GP generic DDR4 chips. I did actually have some... Um, Corsair, I believe, uh, 3000 chips in here and was able to set it to DDR 3000 speed. Originally I had it to 2933, but 3000 works just fine. Again, another thing that I noticed that worked much better once you update the BIOS um, as opposed to a build from last year. And uh, just some other options down here as well too. Oh, truck passing by me. Don't mind that. And uh, over here is where you would actually update your BIOS. At this point, I don't want to. You can actually update it with a USB thumb drive. Probably the easiest way to do it. Sorry if that didn't focus there for a second. I'm currently just having two hard two drives plugged in here, one SSD and just a regular mechanical hard drive for just some storage. So nothing too special there. Anyway, um, some hardware settings for fan control, which is pretty useful. So you can see Pretty quiet system. Let's go ahead and boot this up. As I said before, I am running Windows 7 on this on this system for the time being, even though I am going to be upgrading to Windows 10 very shortly. Actually, I meant to click yes. Post times definitely have increased uh, much. Post times are definitely much better after another BIOS build upgrade some time back. Um, if you ever had that issue, let me know because I definitely had it and it was driving me nuts when the system would lock up for like a good 10 to 15 seconds, not doing anything before actually officially booting up. So just for show. Overall, really great board. I actually really planned to do this video <laughs> about a year ago when I originally got this board along with the 1700 CPU. And uh, I never actually posted it, to be honest, even though all those videos are saved somewhere in oblivion. But 
even though this board's still a, about a year old, uh, some people are still looking to jump into the Ryzen bandwagon. And uh, with an updated BIOS, this board actually still matches uh, pretty well with the X470 as well as other boards from other brands as well too. Um, they'll support LED lighting on the board as well too. Um, here, here, and over there. As well as also the little connector down there that I'm using to use on the Ryzen cooler. This one particularly does have lighting, but you can also plug it into somewhere else. Um, around the case, in front of the case whatever you desire. Well, even though this video is about a year late, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, any questions about this board in particular, let me know. I definitely can offer quite a bit of feedback considering that I've had my hands on four or five of these so far and have four of them already working in the wild and up and running. Again, this with a BIOS upgrade, this does support 2700 CPU. I did have the 2700 CPU reviewed earlier this year on this particular board and then moved it to an X470. So it's completely supported. Um, my personal thought on the 2700, I'll definitely shoot in another video on the follow-up after using that board for about 40 to 60 days. 2700 CPU definitely reports higher temps than the 1700, um, despite only being 200 megahertz faster. Uh, I'll definitely get into that in another video though. So. Hope you liked this video. If you do, found it useful in any respect whatsoever, just shoot a like. And I'll definitely be shooting some more videos very soon.